So you're at the point of upgrading the turn signals in your vehicle to LED and you're reading about resistors, maybe you saw it in one of our videos and you're not totally sure about the wiring, how to test it, maybe you've already installed them and you're having a little trouble with it. No problem, in this video I'm going to show you everything you need to know when it comes to testing the resistors, testing your wiring, getting these things installed properly so that your LEDs function just the way they should. So let's get started. <music> Today I've got a 2018 F-150 in the shop. The vehicle does not matter. This process is the same for all of them. This is just what I happen to have available. It's gonna be the easiest to film. So I'm gonna pop the tail light out. And for this, I'm gonna just pull these bulbs out so I can work with them a little bit easier. We've got our Armor Series LED bulbs in the, in the uh, tail and brake lights. We've got the 1000 lumen in the reverse lights. We've got all kinds of videos on this truck, but the truck's not why we're here today. I've gone ahead and put the LED bulbs in, but I haven't installed any resistors yet. Before we get too involved in the vehicle, let's talk about a resistor and what exactly it is and what it does. And more importantly, why do you even need one? Your truck, van, SUV, or car from the factory came with incandescent turn signal bulbs. And the vehicle was designed to work with those bulbs. So the computer is expecting a certain amount of resistance across the bulb itself. And when you slap an LED in there, it doesn't quite pull the same amount of energy. It doesn't pull the same amount of power. And so it'll fast blink. And it's really annoying. You don't want that at all. And it's the only downside to doing LEDs. Thankfully, the fix is very simple. You can install a resistor like this and it all goes away. It goes back to functioning just the way it did from the factory. If you buy our resistor kit, which if you're buying a vehicle specific kit, it comes with the exact resistor you need, it comes with the mounting screw, T-taps. Some people end up buying the wrong resistor on Amazon because they see a pack of resistors for three bucks, whatever, and it doesn't come with any of this, and the resistor itself doesn't even work for that vehicle. So if you have any questions on that, just contact us. We'll help you find the right thing. The resistor itself has two wires on it, and it doesn't matter which wire of the resistor goes to which wire on the bulb so long as one wire goes to your turn signal wire and the other wire goes to ground. You cannot ground this wire and put this wire on parking light, that won't work. It needs to be ground and turn signal. If we look at the socket on this particular truck, you're gonna find that one wire is ground, one wire is gonna be parking light, and one's gonna be turn signal. On this 3157 socket, which is a super, super common turn signal bulb socket, these outer two wires are your ground and your turn signal. So as long as one wire from the resistor goes to ground and the other wire goes to turn signal, you're not going to have any trouble. Now, it's always important to test those wires before you just go connecting them. To do that, you can do it a few different ways. Personally, I prefer to use a multimeter. Uh, this is on the nicer end of multimeters. I'll be absolutely honest, before I had this one, I had a $10 multimeter that I used for years without any trouble. You can get that at any parts store and it's really helpful for projects like this. You might already have one of these in your drawer at home. This is a test light. You can get this for five bucks at Walmart and honestly this is going to get you just as far when it comes to a project like this. They both operate in a very similar way when it comes to installing turn signal resistors. I'm going to show you guys how it all works. Step one, you want to turn your turn signal on. We need to test and make sure that we're on the right wires to begin with, and we can't do that if the turn signal's not on. We've got three wires here, and the way I like to do it is just strip the, the outside one back, the middle one back, and this one back. These are a lifesaver if you're doing projects like this. It's an automatic wire stripper. You can get it at any parts store. Now, if you're going to use a multimeter, we're going to set it to volts DC. It's a solid line and then a dotted line below it. Now, although I have a really, really strong guess as to which wires are my turn signal wires, I'm going to pretend that I don't. And here's exactly how I would figure out which one's which. I've stripped a little wire back on each of these so I can easily access it for the video. Take the ground probe of your multimeter, and I've put a little alligator clip on it so I don't have to hold it. So it's a really handy upgrade if you're doing stuff like this. Uh, and especially for this video, because I've only got so many hands. I'm going to put it on this wire. Now, I don't know for sure that this is the ground. If you're at home and you're, you're testing this out, you don't know that's the ground. Start at one of them. You'll quickly find out whether or not it's your ground wire. Take your positive probe, 
and this is with the hazards blinking and I also turn the parking lights on. We're going to the middle wire. As you can see I've got a solid 12 volts here. It's alternating between 11 and 12. That's my parking light wire. It's solid, it's not pulsating, it's not blinking at all. That is parking light, that is not the wire we're looking for. So let's head over to the other wire, the third pin. As you can see, that is blinking. That is definitely our, our turn signal wire. So, the cool part about this is I know what my ground is, I know what my parking light is, and I know what my turn signal is. Now we can install our resistor. Now one of the easiest ways to test your turn signal, honestly, is with a test light. You probably have one of these at home. Clip this to your ground wire. And the cool part about these is they act just like the, the bulbs you're trying to find. So in this case, if I go to my parking light wire, it dimly illuminates just like the parking lights should. It's not blinking. It's not a turn signal by any means. This is a parking light wire. Let's go to the other wire. So you can see that's blinking just like my turn signal should be. That's my turn signal wire. Simple as that. If you're looking to just buy a quick tool to, to test this and figure it all out, and this is all, you're, all you'll really use it for, not a bad way to go. Test light works just fine. So we now know that our outside pin right here, this black wire is our ground. We know that this center wire here is our parking light. We're going to leave that alone. And we know that this outside pin here is our turn signal. I don't want you guys to pay attention to the wire colors so much on this video because I am working on a truck that you might not be working on. All that matters is the, the wire locations. Just like there are a few ways to test the wires and figure out what exactly your turn signal is and what your ground is, there's a few different ways you can connect this resistor to your wires. If you have a soldering iron at home, you might be inclined to just solder the wires. I prefer that. That's what we do here. It's the best corrosion resistant way of attaching it all. Some guys will argue and say, oh, you should, you should use heat shrink, but to use heat shrink, you got to cut the original wire to get the heat shrink on it. And I'd rather not do that. I don't want to compromise my original wire. So you can solder it, or you can use the T-taps that came in the resistor kit from GTR Lighting. These are a handy little thing, and they work okay. There's really nothing wrong with them. They're just not the best connection. Uh, soldering is arguably the best connection you can make when it comes to joining wires together. Go ahead and insert the resistor wire in this hole here, closest to the bracket that snaps over. And then your turn signal wire, or your ground wire, goes in this little crack here. So here's the turn signal wire. I'm going to floss it in there like so. Make sure it sits in the groove design for the wire there. You can see that in the end. And I usually use pliers for these just to make sure that I've got it all the way. So grab onto it like so and you'll hear it click. Make sure it closes on the wire all the way. And there we have a properly T-tapped connection. That's going to work just fine. The wire's joined. You've got a resistor installed on this end. Now, if you want to solder it, we need to connect the other end of our resistor to the ground wire. Remember that? I went over that in the beginning of the video. One end of the resistor goes to the turn signal wire. The other end goes to the ground wire. In this case, I'm going to use a wire stripper. Strip the resistor wire back a little bit. Attach it to my ground. All right, now take your soldering iron and your solder. And just solder the two wires together. So next, we've got this bare connection here. The last thing to do is put some good electrical tape over it. If you had a bulb in this socket with the resistor wired properly, if you had fast blink before, you won't anymore. It'll slow down, the resistor will start doing its job. I can actually feel it getting warm already, which brings me to my next point. These resistors get hot, and they're not gonna burn your truck down, but you need to be careful where you put them. Take your resistor and the supplied sheet metal screw. I usually put it all the way into the resistor first. That way, if I drop the screw, which I have many times, it won't go too far. Take a drill. You can kind of see in here already, 
where I have one resistor mounted, and that's perfect. That's not in the way, it's not touching any wiring. Nothing bad's gonna happen going right next to it. I'm gonna insert this resistor. Tighten it down just like so. Now is a great time to go ahead and tape up any wires you might have stripped back that you didn't connect to, like this yellow wire here when I was testing it. Now in the hundreds of resistors that I've installed both on this YouTube channel and in my own personal life, I've never had one of these go bad. They just don't fail. They really don't. So if you get this whole thing installed and you've still got fast blink or you've got something weird going on in the dash, you've got a fast blink on the inside and a slow blink out here, make sure your wiring is all, all properly done. The biggest mistake people often make with resistors is they connect the turn signal wire and the parking light wire, or they connect the ground wire and the parking light wire, and that just won't work. It won't do it. It needs to be the turn signal and the ground. If you do it just like I showed you here, you're not gonna have any trouble. Beautiful. As you can tell here, they're bright, and more importantly, they're not blinking quickly. They're blinking the exact same speed that they should be. You can hear it in the truck. Everything's working properly. Now. If you follow these instructions perfectly, you're not going to have any trouble. You've learned about polarity, you've learned about how to mount the resistor, how to wire it, how to T-tap it if you wanted to do that instead. Everything's covered here, but if you need any other help, feel free to visit our website. We've got live chat open on our website. We've got phones, email, you name it. You can get a hold of us in any way possible. You can hit our Facebook page if you'd like. Visit our website, www.headlightrevolution.com. And more importantly, subscribe to our YouTube channel because we're doing stuff like this every single day. We're making videos and content for you guys to help you out with your vehicles. Thank you for watching.